on the last episode of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, no, Starfinder, Shattered Planets. <laughs> uh, we were on the pirate base, and Blythe was there, and we were in jail, and uh, Blythe let us out of jail for reasons uh, that were never fully explained, and probably never will be explained, on account of we made a lot of mistakes. I'll get to that later. So, uh, I went into a jail cell, and I found some Dimitris, and I talked to Vivi, and I figured Vivi was the closest thing I had to a friend next to Alaren, but v that, like, wait, hold on, Alaren is my friend, but Vivi is my friend who can prevent other people from killing me, so, um, not really my friend, I don't know anymore. Point is, uh, I talked to Vivi, we struck kind of a half deal, and, uh, then we ran into, um, Beardsley, that's the one, Dr. Nim over here, and, uh, we were trying to sneak out of the base, and, uh, Alaren accidentally triggered, um, a, uh, well, I don't really know computers, but I guess it would be a like entire base shutdown, which then caused uh, all the pirates to find myself and Nim while we were trying to sneak out of the base, and they found that very awkward, and they didn't like it at all. So we had to kill a bunch of pirates, and then we stole this spaceship, um, meaning that once again, we managed to kill everybody who was even halfway approximating a friend. We are oh, fine. the least popular people in all of space. <laughs> the end. Yeah. Oh. So, uh, we have a ship. Now, have we? How do I learn how to pilot it? Or yes, no. You guys are already what? flying away from that pirate base. I don't have uh, the ability to control my character token. It looks. Oh. Uh. Okay. Let me fix that. I just want no. I just want uh, Greg to go just to the try bridge. refreshing your page. Oh, I just want Greg it? to go okay. to the bridge and be like, "It's a Unix system." <laughs> <laughs> well, so thing things we learned from last time or past couple session is Greg's character is a mechanical genius, and Shell should never be trusted with computers ever. <laughs> yeah. I'm kind of writing it into the lore that the Tritons, while very like inclined towards magitech mostly use actual for... tech is complete mystery to them well <laughs> so they use magitech but also most of it is utilitarian at least in regards to the war with the leviathan so armor oh, I, vehicles i just want it to be like of that nature i, really I just competing. want it to be totally like uh, oh shoot what is it like uh you know how european out outlets are completely different from american ones Mm -hmm. I yeah. want that to be like the key difference like they're almost the same but just because of like very small they differences They use like an like, like... keyboard instead of a QWERTY one. Yeah exactly and so like she looks at a computer <laughs> and she's like <laughs> Yeah sure we'll go with that This is a French they use, they use the Triton equivalent of like a French keyboard <laughs> I don't anyway, even know what that looks uh, like Sheesh. So this is our this is our uh, our, uh, our ship now huh? I mean, oh, it's better than it's the, sort than of the mine. ship. It, remember, it was Nim's ship prior. Yes, I mean, I'll let well, you. Well, I mean, it. Uh, yeah, our, as in, now, in fact, yours actually, and mine. As a correction, uh, technically, I can and will give you this ship. Uh, I have a bit of a business proposition, but let's we'll get to that later. You look, well, I'm not exactly sure about organics and starvation, but you look, oof, famished. We were about to be offered. We Lunch were about to have food. <laughs> yeah, then we were diverted a bit. Yeah. Now, so is there a is there a mess hall on this ship? I actually don't know. I mean, you guys pulled in a lot of cargo. Might be some food in right. there. Right. Oh, did Skitter already? Guess I'm gonna start exploring around. Put all the cargo into the cargo hold. Uh, yeah, working on it. Okay. So I guess actually, Skitter Skitter runs off to do just that. All right. Dr. Nim. Yes. When we left the pirate base, was there anything worth saving left of 
the ship, or at least our former ship. Oh, your former ship. I was watching that on the camera. Ah, uh, well... Hmm. I mean... Because we know that we already retrieved the, the box. I think most of your animals are dead or gone. Oh. Um, animals? Yeah, animals. You mean the spiders? Ah, uh, if that's what they're <laughs> called, sure. Oh no, somebody shot the ship and exploded and there was just a cloud of spiders. <laughs> Shock waving into space. But oh. no, as far as your ship goes, I think the only thing that was left was that crate. Oh. Which we got. That, that's, that's terrible. So, Flurf and Dress, I... Uh, they, they can't be gone. I don't even know what this chair is, but I'm just gonna. Oh, that's sit a down that's a, a secondary. That's like a comms terminal. There's like kind of the main pilot's chamber, and then that's comms. Right. Hmm. Well, I'm gonna walk down the hallways. Okay. So. I suppose I'll follow Greg because I also want him to fill me in on what that deal was. Okay. So as you and also you don't want him to launch himself into space. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Um, I'm just going to reveal a couple of basic rooms. All right. Uh, that you guys know about. So Skitter, Skitter's in the cargo room. He sticks his head out and it's like, guys, there's a... Uh, we're going to have to go halfsies on this. This is not a very big cargo bay. Halfsies? What do you uh. mean? Most of this stuff isn't... You guys grabbed a lot of stuff. <laughs> well, we didn't know what we are going to need. That's fair. Grabbed everything. Yeah. Uh, it's better to have something and throw it away than to not have had it at all. I think. That sounds wise. Bye. What's this thing? What? That's a couch. It's comfy. <laughs> it's another chair. Oh. It, it's kind of one of those, like, sectional couches that, like, wraps around the side of the room. Uh, what's in this hallway? Or, I mean, what's up in this uh, door? So you walk into a bedchamber. Oh, okay. And this is probably another bedchamber. Right, so you bust in on Drez. He's asleep. Uh, all right. What? what? Wait, he's alive. Huh? Greg, look, it's uh -huh. Drez. <sighs> <laughs> so it is. <laughs> I, I look to see if Drez is okay. Right, like, well, does he I have can, any now I can... blaster burns from Blythe or anything? <laughs> he looks tired and wounded. Oh no! Is like it, it looks like he might have taken a whole la laser battery to the face. <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> okay, well, assuming he's unconscious and stuff, I'm gonna, I suppose, use maybe a. I think a potion would probably be more effective than cure wounds at this point. So I'll give him a large potion. What are you just like pouring it on him? Pouring it? How does that even? Uh, are you just a... waterboarding a sleeping person? No, no, that's <laughs> right. That would drown you. That would drown you. So I'll, I'll try cure wounds. <laughs> no, drowning in healing potions is that you can't, it's not possible. <laughs> okay. Okay. So... After a history of narrowly inf avoiding infection via evil potions, I'm sure Drez would be psyched to find out he was fed one in his sleep. Well, I, I discarded all the bad potions. <laughs> Quote unquote, the ones that were magenta in hue, only only the verifiably true and red ones were kept. That, or maybe I want to add an extra die eight, make it a slightly higher level spell. Oh, well, maybe I'll do two. Ah, come on! A one and an eight? That's barely any hit points. You really min-maxed that roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, does that help him at all? I mean, he looks a little bit better. Ah, uh, he's out. That's okay. He can sleep. It's fine by me. <laughs> but how did he get here of all places? We 
We thought when he wakes up, he fun. can tell us. I don't know. Oh. Okay. Every time I wake him up, something shitty happens. So, <laughs> uh, I'm just oh. letting this one ride now. And yeah. Wait, Linda let does, sleeping dress hold, lie. I don't. I don't <laughs> actually know. if Rick has lie. the wisdom skill to actually make that much of a connection there. Let me see. I mean, he it's had enough wisdom score to purposes. ally himself with. Uh, <laughs> no, nah, all right. No, let, let's give Let's give Greg the benefit of the doubt. He's on a He's on a roll for making probably good decisions, but with diplomacy with Vivi as opposed to rolling in and punching. <laughs> be weird right, to suddenly right. uh, rein it in and be like, "Wait a second, no." Greg's intel, Greg's intelligence score of twenty, balanced with his wisdom score of ostensibly ten, more like six, makes for a very interesting character. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, hey, uh, speaking of VV God, uh. You want to come around the corner real quick, Alara, and I have, I'm going to fill you in on some details. Yeah, I was wondering about that, but given that we're once again on a ship controlled by a uh, an android, how safe Hang is Hang on, this? do we have the ability to communicate telepathically with anything? I mean, you guys have uh, the... Uh, we have the message stones. Yeah. Greg, we're still going to have to speak aloud. Now. But won't Vivi be able... Doesn't Vivi, yeah, Vivi like, will be able to hear stones? it. Vivi yeah. will be able to hear us if we use the stones that we're giving Are you, to like, discussing Vivi? this directly next to Skitter? When yeah, Skitter, Skitter is so sad Skitter's a part of the group. Sounding. Uh, I mean, I, we just found what this. <laughs> What's found this? what? It's a, uh, it's a jammer thing. I literally just huh? rolled this on the random loot generation table of what you guys received from looting the pirates oh, area. <laughs> and I was just like, wait a second, this is perfect. Oh, so will this oh, disrupt so we can any discuss devices? This freely. Um, All right. I, it, Anybody trying to listen in has to be within like five feet of us. Listen in via these stones or like no, anything. The cameras in the ship well, or what? I'm not sure about the sending stones. Vivi might be yeah. able to hear us. We could probably just like hide them in our well, bags of holding, I guess, would solve the problem. All right, all right. We won't use the stones to discuss this. Do you think they're always on? Uh, I think it's when you hold them, right? I mean, they she get... was definitely listening to us. Oh. Right now? Oh, I... she knew when to set off the bomb. But we were actually actively conversing with her. At the time? Yeah, yeah. Remember? I was like, hey, Vivi, what, what's this orb that we plucked out of Dimitri's carcass? Yeah, but it was already active at that point. It was. Yeah. Well, I thought that it was activated by Dimitri's death. No, me. I, I think she just wanted to blow up Gorlar, or maybe just the giant corrupted spell crystal thing. I'd already purified it by that point, though. Tell you what, better safe than sorry. Give me your stones. Well, I we, we can just stuff it in our pouches, right? I was gonna put them in another room. Oh. Oh, okay. All right, uh, Greg's just going to idly toss the uh, message stones onto the bed and then come back. All right, so uh, Vivi wants us to find out. I mean, have you noticed that, like, everybody that we've fought freaks out at the sight of magic? Like, magic, not magic tech, but just, like, magic in itself has apparently just been forgotten to the worlds outside of Zagnoth. And uh -huh. Vivi wants to know why. Specifically, Vivi believes that somebody erased it from the, uh, what did she say? The annals of history or something like that. It was erased from know. the archives. It was erased from the archives. That's the one. <laughs> uh, thanks, my subconscious, which has the exact same voice as Alarin. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh... Yeah, so Vivi the wants us to move from the Jedi archives. <laughs> Vivi wants us to find out who erased the existence of magic from the archives, uh, which means we need to do two things: we need to find the archives, and then we need to find the person that did it. Well, uh, wait a that's minute. That's a recursive she goal. You somehow spoke with her through the Dimitri bots. Yep. 
probably sending stones inside the Dimitri bots. I don't know. Or now, it's just when we spoke with Blythe, he seemed yeah. to say that she was well known in this sector, that she was a newcomer and had been I think that she's um definitely stirring up trouble. Yeah. So she said she would do what in return for us providing her with this information? Uh, I think it was basically just like that we were going to kind of uh, uh, ally ourselves with her cause. That or just ensure that she doesn't meddle with us. Yeah, basically we just kind of buy like a right of, uh, like a pact of non-aggression, I think. Mm -hmm. that's well, more that's more or less where it would have boiled down to is just straight up like we'll be able she won't meddle with our affairs okay unless it i mean knowing vivi probably until it becomes very very convenient for her we'll deal with that later but that was pretty much it so that's just giving you the scoop i mean i think that she didn't give us a timeline on this or anything like that she just kind of asked that we look into it so We'll just see, like, how things kind of play out from here, but it's just something to bear in mind. Okay. Well, I did find it quite peculiar, too. I, I, I just thought that the pirates were more inclined towards hard technology as opposed to using magic or magic crystals. Yeah, they were, they were downright afraid of us and our ability to do anything. Well, I, I, I suppose they just had never seen it before. Yeah. Uh, um, yep, yep, yep. Nairath, we use we use magic in our everyday lives, and it's essential in order to combat the Leviathans. It makes me wonder oh, so. if that's why the Leviathans are able to command such fear in in the hearts of those that live around here. And the I am are the Leviathans magical in nature? Oh, oh yes. They they I mean they have to possess magic in order to create their hordes and assail worlds and uh, essentially they because they're spacefaring creatures they can bend time and space to their will too that's how they're able to traverse the stars and get from one planet to the next without that mm. ability i mean could you imagine traveling at light speed as a as a fleshy beast uh what what's light speed oh well, there, there are vast, vast expanses. The speed of light. <laughs> light Between... doesn't move. What? I'm your dress conscious. <laughs> <laughs> How come I have multiple subconsciouses and they're all other players? You should be understand. used to that by now. <laughs> <laughs> remember Dimitri? I mean, uh, remember Dimitri? <laughs> Dimitri was myself. Uh, the one voice I don't hear not anymore. True. Well, I mean, okay, so Wander, clarify things again about planets and stuff. You, Because mm -hmm. you were describing Zagnoth as a plane, but not necessarily, like, are planes technically... Oh, no, you're going to have to find somebody that knows about planets this. Planets or systems? or I, I don't uh -huh. think your character would know this one. Nah. She's pretty self-focused on, like, Leviathans. Leviathans. Yeah, but then how did she get to Zagnoth if she didn't have a vessel or something capable of taking her there? Unless there are portals involved. That'd be a bit much. Alright, well, I'm gonna... Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, I have we, an idea. weren't we invited to get food? Where's the replicator? Well, actually, no, that's a Star Trek thing. Sorry. Oh yeah, where is the mess hall? Or the food? Um, I mean, I've got some food in, the, in one of these crates. I don't think there's a mess hall, though. So we're just gonna have to eat it, like... At the table, Dry. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, all right. Give me whatever. All right. I mean, it looks like they're pretty boring ration packs. Wow. The same thing I've been eating for the past eight months. <laughs> but these are in space. <laughs> so Skitter just hands out what looks to be crackers. Well, Greg eats what looks to be a bunch of crackers. They're fairly filling. Oh, that's Yours good. tastes like potatoes. Oh, that's unhealthy. That sucks. 
I suppose you'd be the type to prefer raw meat, huh, Greg? Huh? Ah. Ah. What Marrow is Greg's favorite meat. food? Huh? What is your favorite Siblings. Food? <laughs> Blood sausage. Uh, the bloodier, the sausagier, the better. Huh. And where do you acquire the, acquire the intestines to, to create your blood sausages? From the same source I get the sausage part. <laughs> and the blood. Usually it all kind of comes together in one dead guy. Guy? And Greg leaves. <laughs> hey. No. Uh, yes. What's up? I'm sorry. How do I learn how to fly spaceships? Oh, well, hmm. I mean, there's the there's the proper way, and then there's the really fast way. Well, time is of the essence. What's the really fast way? All right, it's called brain reprogramming. I haven't done it before, but why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, most places uh, would charge you an arm and a leg, but I could use the practice. Uh. <laughs> um. Um. All right. <laughs> all right. What, uh, what is this? What is this why, like? Why not? Well, new, li new life experiences. Uh. Well, mainly you just. I mean, have you ever heard of hypnosis? Uh huh. It's like that, but. About ten times more invasive, I think. I mean, technically, if I really wanted to, I could open you up. That would be the, that would be the effective matter and relatively fast. But I don't really want to touch the fluids. I don't think the fluids want to be touched by you. Okay. Well, uh, All right. I, I, I will. Fair warning. I, I think I can only do this once, for now, and I'm probably gonna have to do some studies to make sure I don't kill you the second time. Ah, uh, other fair warning, you're going to have to forget something. This is kind of a out with the old, in with the new kind of situation. Uh, I have a huge knowledge of physical science for some reason that I'm not never going to use. All right, uh, let's see, just look at the hand. So he clasps his, like, kind of weird hand over your, your face, and things get, things go green for about a minute. Huh. All right, I think that works. Make a fortitude save. All right. Uh, that's worrying. Okay, yeah, you're fine. Hey. So what happened? <laughs> I you you I dropped physical science and I gained piloting. Yes. Okay. Do I just take all the points I had, all the ranks yep. I had in physical science, and you just and put move piloting? Them. For now, yes. Alrighty. Cool. You feel kind of lightheaded. All right. I'm going to eat more crackers. Thanks, doctor. Yeah, no problem. Uh, tell me when you want to try that again. Mmm. Drez. No, shit. Sorry. Skitter. Yeah? Cracker me up. Okay. Uh, this one tastes like coconuts. Oh, that's kind of better. <laughs> Has... Oh. The same texture as coconuts, too. <laughs> it could just be com compressed coconut. Yeah. I learned I how to fly too. the ship. Oh! Well, that's good. Yeah. I guess I can get rid of that skill, then. What? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. <laughs> but, but you were awesome at it, Skitter. Weren't you the one that got us through the minefield? Uh, yeah, don't worry about it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna steal his thunder anymore. Fine. <laughs> I love the idea that you did permanent brain, brain reprogramming for a skill that we already had. It's okay. We don't need Skitter to round out our rough corners anymore. It's all he's ever done. Ah, uh, Skitter is our guardian angel. Anyway, shut In up, Thread Subconscious. <laughs> ah, uh, awesome Greg finishes too. eating all the coconut crackers. And then, uh... Wait, coconuts? where does trash go on a spaceship? Oh, um... Where do coconuts go on a, in space? <laughs> in my gut. I mean, I'm fairly certain there's, like, a chute somewhere. Oh. Alright. 
Greg just tosses the uh, the the wrapper on the ground and then walks into the cargo room. So you pass like a Roomba thing that seems to be heading for the the wrapper. <laughs> like Greg dark starts opening up a bunch of cracker wrappers oh, and no, that, just that starts Roomba. tossing them everywhere to see what happens. All right, that that Roomba is a security breach. The the Roomba is. I mean, the bro- here. Let's Roomba. Oh God damn it! No, uh, <laughs> Greg pulls out exact, his sword. It has I mean, that exact it? expression. Uh. <laughs> it, it does look it like just, somebody crayoned on like a face to the thing, and it, it just kind of like runs up to each one of them and then like sucks it in. And you, there's kind of like a a puff of smoke with each. The Roomba always just looks Greg, at you judgingly. Uh, puts two. Um, Cracker wrappers equidistant on either side of the room, but to see what it does. <laughs> Which one it chooses? Equidistant. Uh, roll an intelligence check on that one. How equidistant are we talking? Not yeah, as many. You kind of, you kind of. It it looks confused for a second, then goes for the one closest to you, and then the other one. Greg goes into the cargo room and starts. Uh, I imagine it's just permanently following Greg to vacuum up all his hair. It, probably, yeah. The number one source oh, there's of no motoring. investigation. Oh. It's perception, I think? Yeah, it's just perception now. Alright. Uh, so you're looking for stuff? Yeah, why not? Okay, so you find... Uh, there's a lot of crap. It looks like a skitter is kind of starting to sort through it. There's a couple of things that look um, kind of explosive looking. They look like long grenades next to a tube. There looks to be a... Uh, like a... It looks like a bodysuit, but it's, like, transparent. Huh. So if yeah. you wore it, people would be kind of concerned unless you wore something over it. <laughs> um, there are... There's a belt, and then there is also, uh, a, like, a ring-looking thing. I guess it's more of, like, a band that would go around your wrist. Greg slips the band on. Okay. Uh, as you slip it on, a series of three rings... Um, Rings, uh, icons, something, uh, but effectively three things light up on its surf- surface. Cool. Greg boops and beeps them. Okay, so the first one doesn't do anything. Wait, no, no. The first one doesn't do anything. The second one opens up what looks to be kind of like a, a portal next to you, uh, and inside you can see a machine. Huh. Uh. Do I? I guess I can pull the machine you, out. You cannot. It is far too oh. big. The portal looks like it kind of did its best to open up, and then it's just like, oh shit! Uh, I'll hmm. make do. So you could maybe wriggle in there, but there's no way you're getting this thing out. Huh? It's bigger than you are. Huh? Uh, Greg is gonna wriggle in there. Okay. Uh, so you you wriggle inside this thing, and I don't really have it drawn. Um. But it's effectively a, a big quadrupedal robot thing. Where the hell is it? Uh, you don't know, but you're also, like, you're also kind of in this, like, it, it feels like you're in a pocket. Like, uh-huh. you, you can't, you, like, you wriggle inside this, and you, like, try and, like, touch the walls, and you can't really touch the walls, but you also don't feel like you're making any progress. And it's okay. just kind of confusing. Greg gets out of the portal. And the robot. And, uh, presses the third ring icon? The, uh, the portal closes. Okay. Greg, uh, what's this one with the triangle? Is this the crate that we can't open? That is the, uh, the crate you couldn't open. It looks like it's partially open. I bet I know what's in there. Oh my god. Oh. Uh, tear it open. Okay. So you uh you try and rip the top off, but <laughs> for once it resists. And I'm not entirely sure what to do because I usually go with Nat 20s, but this box is indestructible. So effectively what you do instead is you rip out a Oh god, I'm gonna call it fetal and it's the wrong <laughs> word. You you pull out a fetal uh. flurf. <laughs> It I looks knew like it was it. growing on like a vine. Bastard in there. was in there. Gross. Gross. 
I was waiting for you to like near automata black box us. Like he rips it open <laughs> and the whole thing just explodes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Campaign over. Um, Episode eight. Bird found the bomb. Greg picks up the baby. Flurf. Yeah. Are you bad. my dad? <laughs> ah no. <laughs> Yeah, Goes it looks kind dress. of sickly compared to previous Durf, like this uh, or previous Flurf. Like this one, this one looks like it did not have nearly as much source material to pull from. Uh oh. Uh oh. So he takes the uh, the sickly Flurf and uh. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, and uh, makes it nuzzle up against sleeping Drez for warmth. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Give him something to wake up to. God damn! All right, I I can't. Gonna, I oh wait, I can't control. Gonna him. name him Stubby. <laughs> <laughs> As a baby flurf, I I run after Greg and try to snuggle up to the ne the nearest furry thing. <laughs> just little flat, just little like pitter patter feet Mama, on the. Mama, he's, he's not. Can't he doesn't. Crazy. He's not actually like a baby. He's. About Fleur size, he just looks a lot skinnier. <laughs> he's just like seventy-five like percent like of one. <laughs> uh, he he's kind of tastes like the uh, hardtack version of a blueberry. Uh, <laughs> thanks for giving me the taste update as well. Uh, <laughs> hang on one second, I have to sneeze. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm assuming Greg's, <laughs> Greg's constantly just kind of low key tasting everything around him. Yeah, yeah that's fair. <laughs> anyway um greg is gonna walk in and let like toddler flurf toddle after him Wait, and he says to lauren <laughs> uh, uh we got another problem wait that that looks like flurf but he's a different color Where did yeah you find this him? one looks a lot angrier too it's just a he's got that, to say. He's got that <laughs> RBF going on, and I just don't know what's what to do. <laughs> Resting bitch Where flurf. was he? How did he get on this <laughs> <laughs> So it turns out that undestructible crate, or indestructible crate, uh, is a flurf manufactory. So the old flurf died, and well, we I found a new flurf inside that one. But I think it's running out of material, so we need to replenish it in case this flurf is, uh, you know, defective. Well, do we feed him then? Uh, uh, the, uh, the new flurf. Hold on. Greg goes back to the manufactory <laughs> and starts looking for like a flurf manual. <laughs> <laughs> the Skitter, the box you... is closed. Oh. That's Skitter, fine. Do you have anything that's fish flavored by any anything chance? Anything written on uh... the box? <laughs> um, looking for like parenting instructions. Skitter's like <laughs> sifting through a bag of like rations. The new flurf is climbing Greg and feeling up his chest, looking for teats. <laughs> oh, uh, no! Is he under armor at this point. The best I've got is seawater flavor, which is just confusing. Sea water. Seawater? Well, give me I mean, that. Maybe it'll have the okay. salty essence of, of the I fishes. I shove seawater flavored crackers in the flurf. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of salt and vinegar, we've got Is that salt doing and anything salt. for you? Um, uh, I spit out the crackers. <laughs> I, ta I taste the crackers, but I spit them out. Oh no. <laughs> hey, Flurf. <laughs> what are your feelings on fish? N Dr. Nim. Fish. Yes. My feelings on fish are we have like a, this. We have two oh, kinds of stowaways, but one oh. of them we know of, and the second one seems to be a very small clone of one of our former comrades. Oh, let me let me go take a look. We just, he looks like a huh. baby. I thought all of these got blasted ah. to hell on the ship. Wait, what do you mean by all of these? Yeah, there were a bunch of them. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she practically exploded into these things. You call them spiders, <laughs> right? No, these, these aren't spiders. These, this is, uh, well, huh. at least the last one was Flurf. 
Huh. Worf is sort Organics of like half confusing. hiding behind Greg's leg. Oh. Huh. You know that thing's a vegetable, right? A, a vegetable? Yeah. Pure plant matter. Well, wait, so we need to give him water then? Yeah, probably, and some good soil. <laughs> soil? Wait, he... but he looks like As in he's... dirt. I know you're from a water planet. But Under soil is water. where we grow plants. Oh. Uh, that doesn't explain anything about the fish. Uh, let's just say we, I'm just going with what I know and I'm, I'm learning how to become a good fourth dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It's gooder. Yeah. You know I mean, dirt. Um, huh. Unfortunately, we only had the bag of rocks. That's and... a new, oh, the bag of rocks. Rocks aren't All right, really um, suitable. Greg is going to reach in and think of a dirty rock. Uh, yeah, you could you could get some. You, you definitely get some dirty rocks. You're one or two of them pee. are kind of the wrong kind of dirty, and you're not quite sure what to do with them. <laughs> you, you're just going to you're just going to want Pete. OK, I'm, I'm getting um, Pete's dirty rocks or whatever. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. After, after a while, after a, a number of picks and like kind of finagling what to think of. You you managed to pull out some like mud balls, some dirt clods. Nice. Yeah. Alrighty. It's technically, I, a rock. I slump a bunch of like dirt and mud into like a little schmutz pile in the corner of the sofa, and oh, I just no. make the flurf sit in it. Oh. Yeah. This corner. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Aww, yeah. Why not my that spot. one? All right. Is he your, is he your Any water on now? this uh, ship, Doctor Nen? Ah. I can create water, though it might be too much. Uh, just create a little bit of water. I'm then. gonna. I'll have to create. This a is wall weird. I'm gonna go water. back to the bridge. <laughs> I don't like it any more than you do. Hey, wait. Um, is is Flurf actually plant matter, or is that something that? Uh, that no, no. Was just well, actually, Flurf is straight up. Actually, the I do have a small canteen here. Okay. Oh, all right. I, I do Pour I some dribble water it, on him. Dribble it on him, like on his head, or <laughs> give it to his him via his mouth. I I don't quite know. <laughs> or do I just put it at his feet where the mud is? Uh, I That's think you, you dribble it around his feet. The uh, imagery oh. is incredible. <laughs> okay. Uh. All right. I I start to to sprinkle the soil around Fleur's feet with water. Flurf, um instantly starts growing <laughs> thicker fur. Yeah. Ah. I, I, in fact, as far as you can tell, the flur, uh, the flurf's fur might actually just be roots. Oh. Huh. All right. Well, that's a care of that. Oh. I'm okay. out. Well, one minute. I. You see the Roomba dutifully like sucking at the soil. Oh no. <laughs> you can Roomba, Greg no. picks up the Roomba and flings it like a frisbee against the wall. It oh, bounces There's... a bunch of times. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> All right. Oh, shit. No, you broke it. Oh, <laughs> it is okay, dead. Good. Oh. Roomba is no more. There's going to be so much hair accumulating in this ship now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It explodes into a pile of dirt and fur. <laughs> oh, no. It all came back out. <laughs> it all smells like vacuum now, which is the worst smell. Uh, Dr. Nimbus? Yes. Oh, okay. Well,. Aside from the flurf, uh, we have an injured party member. He he's currently residing in one of your. I mean, he looks bedrooms. to be sleeping enough. Or do you want me to actually do some doctoring? Our party just had its second casualty, the Roomba. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I I mean, is that, I can do uh, I can do some doctoring if you want me to. Is it all right that he's just sleeping? Is, is I mean, I heard bed rest is uh, best for organics. Organics, right? But does he still have any open abrasions or wounds or burns? Uh, let me check. Eh, he'll be fine. Just, I mean, don't expose him to any more laser fire, and he'll be he'll be okay. Ah, uh, oh, well, all right. I like how everyone's in a vertical line. <laughs> yep. Oh yeah. For a brief second, we had like a, a grand conjunction with with Shell lining up in the hallway. <laughs> yeah, it was the Aurora Borealis or whatever it's called. So now that Flurf is uh, done growing, he 
scurries on back to his. Uh... <laughs> oh no. Oh no. You can tell you can tell Flirk's the sci-fi race because it's already more complicated and extensive lore than any of the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> Flirf, the ship does not approve of you finding an alternate parental unit. <laughs> Aww. Oh. Wait, oh. this ship is but already it's... attached to the Flurf too. Wait, do all ships in this universe get attached to Flurfs? <laughs> no, th this is this is this or is, is it the box? Flurf ship. The box. What? Maybe that's what is attached. None to None of you Flirf. guys know this, by the way. This is all. This is all Flurf said. Oh, okay. okay. This is Flurf ship. Oh, I thought the first are thing that going, I saw was. Are we going with? with so, oh, no, uh, no. You you have practically most of the most of the vague memories of the previous Flurf, probably. Are we going with Edgar's the one in the whole logic? So the the crew seems familiar to me. So he actually knows me. me already. He already yes. knows Greg. It, it's kind yeah. of like he watched a movie of the previous Flurf's life. <laughs> <laughs> he binged it on Netflix. Ah. Uh. Well, texting, so he only got like half of it. <laughs> How much do you think Flurf would pay attention to himself? <laughs> Um, all I know is spinning and fur. Fur that is roots now? And the cold Apparently. embrace of the void. So, Skitter. Yeah? Do you still have that jamming device activated? Of course. Okay. Well, we didn't really... I suppose we should sit down with the rest of the group about this at some point, but... Zagnoth. Yeah. So... I know that you were able to avoid being on the world when everything went down, but when you escaped to Merrick's shop and such, was there any murmurings, any any rumors about Zagnoth or what had happened to it? And um, because we we've, we've discovered now that the Inevitables are after us, Bayezid is after us. What? I'm not sure if the Inevitables are after you. That's blowing up a planet. I I mean, according to Merrick, blowing up a planet's more of a god's kind of situation. Inevitables care more if you're, like, messing with the fabric of reality. Oh, wait. So the gods are below the Inevitables or yeah. above the Inevitables? I mean, I, they're kind of adjacent. Oh. It's like pool boys and janitors. I see. So... Then everything's really gone. Hmm. I mean, not necessarily. I mean, unless things were protected. No. No. Fair. There was. So I didn't see it happen, and I don't know where Zagnoth is or the whole planet. What was the whole planet called anyway? I don't think I ever learned that one. Ah, uh, I just sort of habitually started calling the entire place Zagnoth. Okay, we'll just go with that then. <laughs> <laughs> I know that Zagnoth was only. I like that the people from the planet are asking each other what the planet was called. I'm not from Zagnoth. We just Is called it Earth. From Skitter's from sort of outside Zagnoth, but yeah. Well, she's we'll not from Zagnoth, so there's probably some official name. We'll call that planet 5E. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I like that. Right. But yeah, I. Uh... I don't know where Planet 5E is. Uh, we're nowhere near it. Or where it was. Right. I, mean, I don't know how long we were out or where the necromancers took us in the time. But, oh uh, yeah, we're probably far from it. And apparently we're also far from my own world of Neroth. So, I suppose you don't know more about the extent of this bounty and who might be after us um well the bounty is kind of specific let's see there's Bayezid, there's the displaced gods there's some sympathetic gods there's several cults sympathetic gods well i mean <clears throat> gods have to have friends <laughs> the god of sympathy <laughs> oh so you're saying that there are gods that are friends of the gods that also want bounties well yeah kind of it's like if somebody blew up your shit, I'd probably care about it. No, very true. Very true. Hmm. 
Well, we know that Blythe was familiar with Bayezid, so he must have some kind of greater influence in this part of space. Bayezid? Yeah, he's kind of still a dick. Oh, well, we already knew that bit. Yeah. Merrick doesn't like him much. I have a concern. Hmm? Uh, if Flurf was going for a boob, but also <laughs> is a plant and has roots... Does that mean he's currently, like, extending roots, like, Groot style into, into Greg's his... armor? <laughs> oh. Probably. It's just all over Greg, slowly expanding. <laughs> yeah, so... yeah, I thought I thought Flurf was... Burr. Is Greg gonna wear, wake up to the worst image? <laughs> he's gonna be in, like, a Flurf cocoon as, like, creeper <laughs> vines are just spread across him. Uh, Greg comes to, rips the flurf off, carries him outside, puts him out in the hallway, and locks the door. Oh. <laughs> Greg goes back to sleep. Huh. Well, I know that... <laughs> Bayezid's bounty is for me. The gods is probably for, well, he who shall not be named. Yeah. Uh, is it all right if we talk about him openly I mean, here? probably. It, you probably just shouldn't say the word dress around, well, well I anybody am, else. I am concerned about this Nimbus. I mean, it oh. did help us, but... Well, I mean, Nimbus is cool. Probably. Really? Yeah, he, he would have no motivation to potentially hand us in for not really. Um, Nimbus has got interesting problems. Interesting. How how do you know about Doctor Nimbus? Well, he's one of Merrick's friends, sort of. Well, he's he's sort of an imp information broker. Oh, of course. Everyone seems to be dealing in information nowadays. In fact, you might got you guys might have actually hit a bit of a. Well, stroke of luck with him. He is, uh, I'm going to say, rapidly an anti-theistic. Oh. Okay, so obviously he wouldn't want to hand us into the gods Probably and not, no. Uh, you should probably watch out for his deal, though. He might want something. His deal? Well, he said he'd give you the ship if you did something for him. I mean, we don't need this specific ship. We don't even know where we're going or, or why. I mean, we do know that if we want to maintain this truce or alliance with Vivi, we'll have to seek out the reason why magic has been forgotten in this region of space. But aside from that, what, what purpose do we have? Zagnoth is gone. Well, And I, as far as I know, my father may be too. I mean, I did say Zagnoth isn't necessarily gone. That's true. It's just missing. Hmm. So I suppose we have to find someone that knows where it's situated or where it was situated or... Kinda? I mean, so, okay. So I'm gonna level with you. No one knows where it is. How's that? It's I like mean... the Cloverfield paradox. I, I don't know, but nobody knows where it is. I've Maybe looked. it's... Well, considering Zagnoth was a backwater planet and magical in nature, maybe someone didn't want it to be found? Well, so backwater planets are still listed. Zagnoth wasn't. Ah. Huh. Or Planet 5e wasn't. Let's go with that. So... It could have been stricken from the list. Intentionally. Just like what Vivi said. Or it was never found to begin with, but my father had even ventured there. Surely unless his unless his patron knew about the world, but didn't divulge it to anyone else. Uh, I really wish I knew who my father's patron was. That was part of the mystery I hoped to uncover by finding him, but well, who knows? 
I just want to do. I just want to know what Flurp's doing this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I've been, I've kind of been waiting for a an opening, I guess. Uh, Flurp asks the ship to unlock Greg's door. Oh, uh, ship can't do that. The ship is currently uh very okay. limited in what what then, uh, uh, she can do. Flurp uh, attempts to hack the keypad. Or... Okay, make a computer's <laughs> check. <laughs> All right. Uh, the door opens up. <laughs> okay, I have to grow big and strong like my dad. Oh. <laughs> By feeding off of him. The ship still presents this. <laughs> well, that's what the ship gets for ignoring my <laughs> unlocking the door. I don't know. Oh my god, Flurf! You get the very distinct feeling slash knowledge that your your ship is literally just a box in the cargo bay. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> okay. No, you. Okay, so so then this sh this ship that we're in that is not Flurf, the same. Yeah, things that Flurf okay. knows. Your ship is gone. Your ship is pissed about this. Your ship wants a new body. Oh. Oh. No. oh. The ship. Uh, and beyond that, you also have a unhealthy fear of two things. Uh, the cold depths of space and the lizard in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I guess that makes sense. I feel like this this ship might become the creepiest villain. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna shoot babies at you. <laughs> <laughs> An army of flurfs, you say? You just have 20 flurfs coming out, all sickly looking like, I have memories and dreams, and they just start attacking <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, for, the, for the time being, I'm just going to nuzzle up to, uh, to Greg. Oh. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you needed to know? Um, well, I, what do you think, Skitter, now that Zagnoth is gone? What will you want to do with yourself? I mean, I've mostly been working for Merrick. You guys were gone for a while. A, a while? Yeah, like, a year? Two? Uh, well, a, a year? How? I don't know. You just popped up in Merrick's shop, and he's like, Skitter, you gotta come back. And I was like, okay, I'll stop killing this dude, and I came back. Wait, what how dude big are is you his, killing? How big is his beard now? I keep it finely trimmed, thank you. He says, talking to the wall. Oh yeah, no, well, he, he, just, is metanology. he just says that out loud. <laughs> huh? Don't worry about it. <laughs> Greg oh. wakes up, peels the flurf off of him, Carries the flurf outside to the hallway. <laughs> drops the flurf on the hallway. Flurf latches Shuts onto the Greg. <laughs> oh, the door! Yeah. The door does not does not shut. That door is oh. hacked open. Uh, <laughs> Greg goes over to Drez. Or drops does not the flurf. follow. Oh. I, I think you're going to have to sleep <laughs> next to Drez in order to escape. They're, they're bunk beds. I just don't have them shown. Sorry. <laughs> Greg sleeps. Oh, did, uh, did Bird miss that explanation? Yeah, he did. Oh. Yep. He was, yeah, while well, you were gone, it, huh? I, guess, I guess you don't need to know, actually. Yeah, th this, is, this would be metagame knowledge, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Yep. So Greg goes to sleep on the bunk bed. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> no he's Are so you okay. <laughs> that reaction is just Oh no. <laughs> Recalculating. <laughs> so does this flurf just rock back and forth instead of spinning? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's like a confused spin. <laughs> so Well, th th I was just doing this to like uh Sort of, sort of thinking, contemplating. 
Yeah, it's like is, a Lawrence Greg all right I, I was there. just imagining each flurf is largely the same with slightly different quirks, so instead of spitting this one, kind of like rocks back and forth on himself. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we've been gone for a year. Yeah. The necromancers were just keeping us in there, or? I don't know. You'd have to ask. Oh. Where'd they go? <laughs> they? Oh. Oh. I mean, <laughs> weren't weren't they blasted into oblivion? I mean, if they kept you guys alive for two years in a bubble in space. Two years? Ew, I don't want to think about two years. Wait, I thought you said one year. I don't know. I'm. I still can't do math. Uh, I thought. He, wait, I thought he did say two years. I thought he said one year. He's, he said both, but Skitter can't do math. Oh, maybe it's been a week. Been longer has than a else, week. Has anyone else confirmed with Skitter how long it was, or did he just start making it up? I I start to be worried about like, because it seemed in Zagnoth with, with the worms and such. Uh, I I need to go speak with Nimbus. I okay. I need to find out if we're gonna turn into zombies in the next two minutes. Okay. Oh shit! I missed some deets. Oh, uh, Go to make some toast for three seconds. Yes. Mm. Well, you weren't in Dr. the room Nimbus? anyway. Yes. I don't know. You're. You have the ability to, like, uh, of, scan organics of for course. Yes. ailments and such, no, right? I pretty much know everything that's wrong with you. If you, if that's the question. You you already do. <laughs> yes. Well, do I have parasitic worms inside me? No. I mean, <laughs> malnutrition. I don't know what you've been eating, but it's certainly not enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. We we've really only been having hardtack and these weird crackers and rations and water here and there. Haven't really had a full meal in a long time. I'll be honest. There's kind of a I'm gonna call it an irregularity, but when I, when I put you under the, uh, I guess certain certain uh, light light waves or whatever. I'm trying to think of how to describe it in layman's terms. I have no idea what the tool would be, but uh, if I look at you with the right lens, you are blinding. I don't really get that. Blinding? Yeah. What? Which lens are you using? Uh, I've never done science bullshit and stuff. Um, <laughs> <laughs> official lines. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I like Dr. Nim. <laughs> the information broker who doesn't... Who's, simultaneously seems like on my most trusted and least trusted list <laughs> i was worried he was gonna cut out cut her off like do i have yeah leukemia yes okay. <laughs> like, it was gonna be like a little worse uh, like, like, by the way you should get that mall checked out or something. <laughs> you should have a lump on your soul <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, we'll call it a spectrometer that might actually be the right term i'm not <laughs> I'm I'm honestly and decidedly not, sure. not. She's not oh. like a planet. Oh, uh. <laughs> anyway, don't, don't be surprised by this, Doctor Nim. But I'm going to create something. Okay. I send a mage hand across the room. Ooh. Does that glow at all? Yep. <gasps> it's magic. Huh. Bullshit. What? What do you mean? Magic's not real. Well, uh -uh. Didn't you just see me manifest this mage hand? Freaking could just be. Uh, I, I have it light do a little waves dance. and well, heart. I mean, it, honestly, it could just be hard light. Hard light. Yeah. Look at what I can do. He does the same thing. Ah, I yeah. I peer at it and I poke. Well, it. you can't really see it, oh. but he's like spinning the chair a little way, like little ways away. Ah. Oh. We use it for force fields and stuff. So, it's something made tangible with technology? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what you're doing. Clearly. Well, this isn't this isn't technology. Do uh -huh. you see? Uh. <laughs> I did say he was rapidly anti-theistic. I feel like I'm gonna <laughs> love, that extends I, I just, to magic. Does, I just um, feel like I'm gonna love his lines. Where he's gonna be like, "Let me scan you with my IRS machine." <laughs> I, I've got a quick question. How uh, how big is the 
ship's box? Uh, it is almost Large exactly size. five feet by five feet. Okay. Oh, so that by yeah, that's what Flurf came out of. So yeah, no way Flurf can move it. No. Well, I mean, you're a doctor. How would you explain this? This correlation between what I create and the light that's emitting from myself, at least on your spectrometer. I don't know. It, I mean, it could just be some new type of radiation. Who <laughs> knows what plant you came up from? Well, I... Luckily, you don't seem to be cancerous. Yet. Oh. All right. Well, I, I originally hail from Nairath. Huh. Never heard of it. Well, it's been surrounded by leviathans for centuries. Hmm. Well, and we've that's been a problem. Locked in an eternal war with them. Ah, I mean, uh, here we go with the leviathans. No, nah, no, nah, I won't. I won't extrapolate on I that. I know about them, but if your planet's in leviathan space, uh, good luck getting there. Uh, how lo how far does leviathan space Excuse extend? I'm not. It changes a lot. Sometimes it's controlled by them, sometimes a couple of the cults take a piece out, and then sometimes the Leviathans come back and just beat them into oblivion. What do you know about the cult of Abraxas? Abraxas? Uh, oh, the dead Leviathan. They're still kicking. Turns out they figured out how to reanimate his corpse. <gasps> oh! Dun, dun, dun! That's monstrous. I'd call it practical, but yeah. I mean, what are they going to do? Give up their religion? No. <laughs> They're just going to weaken and Bernie's that shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh yeah, he's still alive and kicking. It's and just, do they do this gotta, with... He's a little smelly. With Oh, Drez, technology? you missed a humdinger of a whopper. I mean, I'm sure I, I did. They've never let me get anywhere close to it for good reason. I wouldn't go there anyway. Ugh. Nah, I, it. Oh. All I know is that Abraxas is still sort of kicking around, but there's something wrong with him. That's saying a lot. Well, I know the reason for that, but I need to know. The. Before we go anywhere, what are, what's your relationship with, say, gods, inevitables, and, oh, individuals like Bayezid, or? Bastards, a lot of them. You've, oh, did you say bastards? Yeah. Oh, thank goodness. Well, we're no friends of them either. I know. You know. I know who you are. To what extent? I mean, decently far. Word gets around. I mean, you... I mean, you've got a considerable bounty. That lizard in the back, Scott. Whew. And you have no interest in said bounties. No. I'm a... I'm one of the richest people in the galaxy. What, what need do I have for more money? What? He, you, oh, you are? that's not how rich people are. <laughs> <laughs> what is this science fiction? <laughs> you're anyway. You're Turf is really loading. Really, one of the richest individuals in the galaxy. Then why were you captured by the pirates? I wasn't. I was hanging out there. So you were just studying <laughs> them. What were you Staying doing? Out. I was just. I was. Uh, I mean, you know what a mole is, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. So you're spying on them? Uh, yes, sort of. I mean, I wasn't spying on them, per se. I like to spy on everybody. But aren't they the everybody on that station, or was there someone else? I mean, them, the Cult of the Flaming Eye, mainly the Cult of the Flaming Eye. That's, but like, the best place to spy on them. Blythe didn't say anything about the cult of the flaming eye being present on the station. No, they're not. But it's smack dab in the middle of sp uh, their territory. The only safe place to do so, too. Anywhere else. Well, who knows? Inquisition could just blow right through. What can you tell me about the cult of the flaming eye? Well, they're... 
They're weird. They're... I don't normally... Uh, mix with a whole lot of organics, but... Well, them? They're messy. Like, organically messy. More so than you usually are. It's a problem. Organically messy, so... They yeah. like gene therapy and flesh mixing. All sorts of horrid shit. Oh, so they modify themselves. Yeah. A lot. Hey, babe, you want to go flex flesh mixing after work? <laughs> <laughs> huh. And what's the flaming eye that's at the central of this cult? Well... Well, that is the central... I'm not really thing. sure. Uh, it's... It's, as far as I know, it's not a real thing. It's some kind of, uh, metaphysical being? I'm not sure, but if you get high up enough in the cults, it just possesses you. It possesses you? Yep. So everyone's aspiring to be this host? Be one with it. It's apparently like some kind of post-utopian society. They're all dicks. It possesses you if you get high enough in the cult? <laughs> Ugh. So, what do they do to to other peoples? Peoples that are not part of the cult? Well, if you're down for joining their little club, they add you to the mix. If you're not, well, they set fire to you. Ever seen a spaceship burn? No. They're not supposed to. They do. Oh. Uh. Ever see a robot burn? They do. So, speaking of, you're you're an android, right? Yep. So who made you? I did. You made yourself? Yep. How were you, say, an AI before and got your hands on some machine that could develop a body for yourself? Or how did that work? A little bit of both. I mean, how do you think intelligent life came to the universe? Uh... Exactly. Well, a, a lot of... One day I just was. And one day I made a body for myself out of rocks. That sucked. And one day some bastard in a spaceship landed on my planet and was like, Hey, look at this! Tons of rare resources. And I was like, that's me! Wait, you, you inhabited a rock? I was. You were a rock. I was a rock! How For an anti-theist, he sounds Jewish as hell. <laughs> <laughs> how does a rock contain a consciousness? How does a meat sack contain a consciousness? Well, you see, you see there's a thing called the Old Testament. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, rocks are, I mean, they're comprised of, like, minerals and stuff. You realize and most computers are made out of rocks. Ish. <laughs> I twiddle my thumbs at that. Computers have thus far eluded me. Right. Forgot. Redneck. Hey! Uh, oh. Oh. My neck is blue, thank you very Fine. much. Fine. Blue neck. There we go. Oh. No. He's calling you a redneck because you take everything literally. I don't even get that. Yeah, I don't either. It's Drax. Oh. He's red. I still uh. don't get it. He's it green. Takes everything exactly as literally as Lauren. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, interesting. So you were a rock. Yep. You got collected. Yep. And then how did you transfer yourself into this body? Well, they started, uh, well. I mean, do you want the long version, or do you want the short version? Did they make you into gravel? No. Oh. They tried. Okay. And I made happen. them gravel. I made them gravel. <laughs> you mean gravel? Well... Gravel at your feet. I mean, there was a time when I decided that all organics should be meat paste. <gasps> I said it was a time. They were meat gravel. Ground meat. Exactly. Patties. I did not have a whole lot of love for your kind, collectively. Not you specifically. <laughs> and then what changed your mind? Well, I realized there were a lot of you. And some of you weren't, weren't meat gravel worthy. 
And how did you come to be a doctor? Well, I mean, when you've lived as long as I have, you're pretty much everything. Hmm, hence all the PhDs? <laughs> Many. Oh, huh. and are you technically immortal? I mean, no, you could kill me. It would just take a while. I, I mean, I, I didn't mean like immortal in the... Oh, immortal you mean ageless. Yeah. Okay, yes. Wow. That... It's boring. That's the other reason why I don't just meat paste everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. Well, well, thank you for saving us. Or breaking us out, or a combination of all the above. I don't know precisely what happened back there, but... Hey, no problem. I honestly, it was about time for me to leave anyway. And... That also kind of segues into the thing. I need a favor. <laughs> right. Uh, I just yeah. like how his previous explanation was like, mass murder is just so droll. <laughs> but hey, when you make enough meat and gravel, you learn how it works. <laughs> and that's why he's a doctor. Uh, and what is this favor? I know that well, Scatter mentioned it You know how I've been spying on the, uh, oh, the cult of the flaming eye? Yes. They're a problem for, like, a lot of people. A lot of people that I've, you know, grown a little fond of. Like who? I mean, you know how many planets there are in this sector? Uh, I'm guessing quite a number. I... Yeah, millions. Mi mi millions? I mean, it's a big sector. Space is huge. Oh. And most of them are pretty empty. As far as inhabited ones, I, I think we could narrow the list down to a couple hundred. Okay, that's a that's a bit more manageable. Of that, about oh, jeez, I want to say two hundred and thirty of them are under flaming eye protection. I say protection very loosely. Protection by. I mean, benevolent gaze does not really apply. Mm hmm. And I want you to destroy them. The flaming eye. Yep. Huh. I mean, it, does our reputation precede us? Is, is that why you're... I said I know who you are. Uh, I figured that was kind of implied in the words. I, I, that was entirely <laughs> accidental. We, oh, uh, we really didn't know what we were doing back there. Hey, you got results. It, not the results. I like we... this guy's way of thinking, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> so, these planets... Yes. You don't want us to shatter them all, do you? I mean, one or two. Are they are are they really irredeemable? You did not There's... just say that, by the way. I. <laughs> she said the thing. She said the thing. She said, she she said the, thing. the thing. She said the thing. So we should just like plot an air horn right now and be like. <laughs> <laughs> shattered. You might say that these planets are shattered. Yeah. <laughs> I did say that intentionally. Okay. I'm so. glad we both went immediately to the same space there. <laughs> it's been like five years. Are they really irredeemable, everyone on these worlds? Well, I mean, you could spend the next thousand years reprogramming them, and the flaming guy would still stick around. But honestly, I meant kind of more so... I want you to blow up the flaming eye. Okay. Well, that I can understand. Huh. Well, I suppose that gives us a purpose. Uh, in a way, they... They are cruel, correct? Very. They, they do slay innocents. They set innocent robots on fire. Why only robots? <laughs> I mean, they probably set other people on fire too, but... Oh, but because you have nothing to offer them, because you're not organic, they especially despise you? Yep. Can't exactly convert if you don't have any flesh. Oh. And some tried. That was not pretty. I find that interesting, since the pirates seemed very gung-ho about incorporating mechanical uh, appendages and such to their persons. Well, I mean, that's that's going cyborg. I mean, technically, yes, you can... 
You can kind of go fleshy if you're a robot, but it's not the same. Really? I mean, ultimately, you still end up being synthetic, mostly. It's just kind of a fake organic, which is what this is. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, this is all very new to me. Well... Are there many other androids? Do they all have beginnings like you? Uh, well, I mean, there's a lot of organics uh, that have made androids. Mm -hmm. But no, I've never met anyone else like me. Oh, have you ever returned to your home world to see if there were? I never left. Wait, you, you never left your home world? I mean... I thought you said you were a rock, un unless you're... You were a the mini Ultron? rock? <laughs> were you just a rock in space? Yes. Very big one. Wait, so were you a moon? No. Were you a planet? A whole one. Wait, what? A whole planet. You were a planet? I am a planet. Am? I, I sort of look him over considering now but he's... But then he shattered... <laughs> Uh, uh. <laughs> <Yeah>! <laughs> Wait, so I... But you're so much smaller now. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have fingers. Wait, so this android body is just a finger? Yeah. Then doesn't that mean there can be ten of you? Yes. Well... Hundreds. I Thousands. Hundreds of thousands. That's a lot of fingers. It's a lot of fingers. I can do a lot with a lot of fingers. Unfortunately, I'm also sworn partially to nonviolence. So that's why you need us. Yes. To do your dirty work. Yes. To, to meet pace. Well, also, I mean, okay, so here's the thing. I'm a bit indiscriminate when I start firing. You, you can do things that I can't. You can also infiltrate, which I can't. You can get within, you know, spitting distance of their planet, which I can't. They'll see me coming a mile away. Oh, of course. Well, all right then. I, I suppose if these flaming eye cultists are as dastardly as you say, then... Then we have an obligation to help those people. That's what I thought. Thank you. So... Uh, it, there are some intermittent steps. Obviously, I'm going to have to leave your, your uh, company, I guess, uh, in order for you to get uh, close to them. However, that doesn't mean I'm going to send you in unprepared. Well, of course. I, I mean, I sort of look down at my, my equipment and stuff. We, you're sorely unprepared for facing those pirates earlier. I mean, we, we still... Yes, I've Slacked noticed. All, but... Swords, swords have come a long way since. Well, actually, I don't know about your sword. Your sword's weird. Oh yeah, I bring it up. <laughs> yeah, real weird. I send it back into its seat. We're like one mistake from undoing this entire lore description of this character. <laughs> hey, for whatever it's worth, we've undid many, many, many <laughs> other characters. Like, oh god! <laughs> That's just that character's just gone. <laughs> I wasn't touching uh, that. Nat I, mean, I do a flourish. Roll an attack roll. <laughs> Nat That's what we did with uh, uh, the sword. I was actually one point away. All of this was away. just like character development for the shocking death of this episode. <laughs> Last he, session, he was wearing I was a actually... red shirt the whole time. <laughs> Last session, I was actually one uh, die like point away from annihilating. Greg, Greg through Greg. a wall, yeah. well, a door, yeah. by poking him in the butt. That was bad. I still have to apologize for that. Nah, that's is cool. That, is that why Greg sounded so sad this episode? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's because his hot boyfriend, uh, they abandoned him. Hey, I liked him. I drew an awesome picture. This is picture. a love triangle. Hey. I'm asleep. Who is the third person in the triangle? <laughs> I thought it was just... Greg and so White dress has witnessed one. Well, Lauren the has the, the hots for him too. Oh, well, guess I I'm mean, killing them. He did say he <laughs> liked me, but hot fish smell bad. 
<laughs> so do sweaty dogs. Meanwhile, Greg's always hot. He can't ever stop being hot well, all wait, the time. Dogs can't sweat. Why is always, so yeah. why is always panting? They, I, okay, well, wet dog. You didn't then. notice for the last 80 episodes the character trait of Greg where he's always panting? Oh, no. Greg is an extreme <laughs> mouth breather. <laughs> extreme <laughs> mouth breathing. <laughs> Drez, you're awake, by the way. No. Somebody is snoring. <laughs> oh, that's what's happening. <laughs> Lurf is pawing at the door. <laughs> oh God! I cannot stress enough how much it was like assumed that this this session would start with with Dres being woken up immediately. <laughs> I think Wander finally gave up. No, it's like, just the moment we mentioned that Greg's an extreme mouth breather. I'm like, oh, Greg probably <laughs> snores really loudly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I kick the bunk. Uh. uh. Oh, you're awake. Well, you didn't sleep on me this time. Yeah. I think I realized something. I don't actually like you very much. <laughs> I've tried to be your friend uh, uh, the whole time, and, and you're kind of mean. So, so, yeah, deal with that. By the way, I tried to save your life and my heart exploded. <laughs> oh, when that happen? The first time I died. <laughs> oh, right. Well, what have you done for me lately? Save you from a giant worm? Yeah, about that. Disable the invading boarding ship? So Greg is going to fill in Drez on all the details of the worm. Incident. <laughs> uh, I'm doing this out of character because Durf has yet to get, or Flurf has yet to get filled in on this, <laughs> so that he still doesn't know. Well, also, I'm, yeah, it, it's easier yep. to role play if you don't know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why um, I don't come here when when I'm not in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna. Although fill I've got in a lot of information this episode to pretend I don't know. <laughs> yeah, character knowledge is a real pain in the ass, but it's a <laughs> lore-heavy series. L anyway. Luckily, Shell is the one to get most of the lore, so we don't have to worry about it. Yep. Alrighty, so yeah, I fill in Drez on, on everything that uh, Greg knows from his perspective, which is basically everything. But I don't know that what he what Greg knows. Right. Well, this is kind of a problem. <laughs> um... <laughs> Bullet, bullet points <laughs> bullet points that I can think of. Uh, you, I guess, Drez would know you inadvertently blew up the planet. Uh, Dre Drez hasn't known Greg that. Knows this. Well, no, yeah. Drez knows this now. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm telling... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're giving him the... Yeah, okay. so bullet, bullet points that Drez now knows. Even though the last conversation was like, maybe it's not blown up but missing... But that no, was I'm Greg, you in But now. Greg doesn't know that. Yeah, Greg doesn't know that. <laughs> so yeah. I'm getting filled in just in time for the information to probably be wrong. Be old. <laughs> oh, Son oh. Of a bitch. Perfect. Oh, God life could not get any sweeter. Oh, um, universe. Let's see. Uh, you guys. Uh, let's see what else is there. There's a massive bounty, and a lot of gods uh, are out for Drez's head, um, and so you are worth a lot. Uh, honestly, that's the main couple of points. Uh, you've been yep. allied, kind of, sort of, with Vivi again, mm -hmm. and yeah, that, how and would you a guy do named that? Blythe. Yeah, there's a hot dude named Blythe that I don't. Yep. I think Drez kind of tuned out when Greg started talking about Blythe. Well, I mean, Drez met Blythe, and boy, did it make our life horrible. Yeah, well, like I true. saw Blythe once. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, well, once was no interaction. Him. You saw him once, and boy, did that make everything just so much worse. I once saw an so angry face for a minute. Well, no, he had, he had originally told you to leave the room, and then you left, yeah. and then you came back. And then he uh, shot him. Ah, uh, yeah, a long and meaningful relationship. <laughs> Full of character development and motivations and backstory. 
Why would you ally yourself with Vivi again? Uh, seemed like a, the best idea at the time. Look, we don't have... We're... You... You don't have any friends in space. There's us. That's... We're kind of working out right now. But we need, like, some real heavy hitters around here. And Vivi seems like she's kind of the master of this realm. Or at the very least, she's gunning for it. So... I can do no friends. I'm used to no friends. It's easy. Yeah, the problem is you need friends right now because everybody's trying to kill you. As opposed to when? Hold on. Greg opens the door to the flurf that's been, like, scratching and <laughs> kicking at the door the whole time and just punts him. Oh. <laughs> um, It's a very I light noise. Yeah, I'm gonna be, like, skirting it's not, him. it's not trying to kill him, but it's trying to just, like... Get him away. I I dodge it. it, it it's kind the, of like it's it's kind of like when you try and hit the reflexing. kickball as it's coming towards you, and you just kind of like oh, shit. <laughs> yep. graze it. Yeah. Oh. Like dodges your foot and clamps onto it. <laughs> ah, nothing oh, but fur. No. Oh no. Oh. So Greg uh, like kind of wiggles his foot around while Flurf is like attached onto it, like <laughs> hugging it, and. uh he just kind of looks at Drez and says, like, got any ideas? Oh, you found more of those, too. What do you mean by two? Oh. Yeah. What? Flashback, flashback, flashback. <laughs> <laughs> I actually woke up missed this entirely, so you have to fill me in. in you character. didn't miss it entirely. It never happened. Yeah. No. Next, the no. explanation of what happened to me has never occurred because no one woke me up. Yeah, well, asked. I'm here it now. <laughs> I'm gonna hear so, it now. So I woke up in a bubble when the ship exploded. Oh, that's good. And there was a weird box. Yeah. And I was kind of alone in space. I could breathe. That was weird. And I just pressed the button, and another one came out. And, I, what, and that, that, that was weird. And I'm like, I'm like, that was easy. So I just pressed it three more times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Where are they? These things must be really cheap to make. Like, they come out, like, fully formed, kind of skinny. They even have the jetpacks and everything. So I just held on to them and turned them all on, flying around, <laughs> tr try, trying to get... <laughs> it's really hard to say this seriously. You made a fucking flurf pod. I made a uh, flurf. What was the thing you guys would call it in Scrap Mechanic? The automated <laughs> ship thing that you just let loose in your world? Oh, uh, a wongle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I made this, a derf, a flurf wongle. <laughs> so I just had four. <laughs> I just had four flurfs and I just turned them on and we flew. I was trying to get to anywhere besides space, uh, understandably. You turned them on? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does this flurf have a jetpack on him? Yes. <gasps> So their automated defenses turned on. I didn't know those were a thing. And they shot it at us. And do you know that th these things tend to wake up right before they sense their deaths? Um, one of them just opened its eyes. and then right now? One of them opened its eyes and then just got, like, disintegrated. So then I had three oh. flurps and I was flying through space. <laughs> I found a hatch, but I kind of hit it too hard. And I lost one of the flurps. It's, it just kind of flew off into space. Making a sound. I hope that doesn't come up later. <laughs> but I, I was able to get into the hatch, and I was tired. Almost dying makes you kind of tired. I just really wanted to sleep. And I was walking through this area. Everyone else was sleeping. That was weird. And there's a ship. And I just went on that one. And hi. <sighs> hi. Oh, yeah. And I opened the overhead compartment. The other two flurfs fall out. <laughs> but are they dead? Yes. <gasps> it looks like they might have lost much of their faces to laser fire. <laughs> I, I I take one of the dead flurfs and I hand it to the living flurf and like try to make them hug. <laughs> that is so um, gross. Um, okay, well, being a plant... When you uh, said they were dead, I was going to go a different direction with like, oh, I forgot to put air holes in it. <laughs> like, I just, like <laughs> I just didn't make it a livable box. 
the the, the current flurf just absorbs it <laughs> into its being. Oh, oh. It's eating oh, them no, to grow no. larger. No. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> All right. Well, what did I just witness? I, I, I was coming back after hearing the the deal. <laughs> Uh, I chuck the other dead flurf to Alarin and say, <laughs> you, you oh, here you go. You can do the other one if you want. You Wait. witnessed reverse mitosis. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean by do the other? What? what? Come on, give it to him. He looks hungry. I very meekly extend my arms with the dead flurf and hold it over the, the live flurf. Tentacles of fur wrap around and uh. grab the, <laughs> the flurf corpse. And I, Flurf I like consumes it. Ah. <laughs> does, he, does he grow a little bit? Oh yeah, no. He is a little bit larger than your, the previous Flurf. With three jetpacks. But I oh no. Oh, he's is he got all eating of the jetpacks? Is he putting them on or what? <laughs> he's just wearing them all at once. <laughs> well, he is like a... Uh, I guess I have to roll an engineering check or he's something. Like a, he's like a high schooler yeah. trying to one-strap three backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. I'm triple cool now. Flurf, you, you've managed to increase your 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 speed a little bit when using jetpacks. Well, they went nowhere, but did so much. Wow, yeah, really, they just moved around about three rooms for about an hour and a half. But well, I think stuff got done anyway. Raised one hell of a lot of questions. Uh, why is Flurf a vegetable? How many Flurfs died? Uh, will will Greg and Drez ever become friends? Is Drez just simply evil? I guess you'll have to find out next time on Shattered Planets.